What up YouTube, hope y'all are having a solid week. Today we are gonna talk about my new favorite lens. Gonna talk about what I love about it, what I don't love about it, and whether or not you might wanna purchase this lens. So the lens we're gonna be talking about today is this one right here. The Sigma 35 millimeter F1.4 art lens, specifically made for the Sony E-mount system. Let's jump right into it. So just to preface this before we jump into it, this is not going to be the most technical review in the world. I'm not going to be taking pictures of charts and comparing sharpness throughout the aperture range and things like that. There's a hundred other reviews out there that I'm sure do all of that, but I want to focus on the real world application and the real world use cases of this lens. I've broken down this review into a couple of different categories and I'm going to read them off for you so that I don't miss any of them, but we're going to focus on focal length, image quality, autofocus, build quality the size and weight of the lens, and then finally, it's value for money and whether or not you should buy this lens. All right, first things first, focal length. When I'm talking about focal length, I constantly get asked by people, what's the first prime lens that I should get? Or if I can get one prime lens, which one should I get? And I constantly recommend to people to actually get a 35 millimeter equivalent lens. So if you're shooting on like the Fuji system or an APS-C system, it's probably gonna be a 23 or a 24 millimeter lens. If you're shooting on a full frame camera, it's gonna be a 35 millimeter lens. I say this and I recommend this to people because I genuinely think it's the most versatile focal length for anybody to use. It's a perfect middle ground between being too wide or too tight to shoot just about anything. So when I talk about the 35 millimeter lens, I talk about it because it's perfect for shooting things like landscapes or cityscapes when you need a little bit of a wider angle of view, but it's also perfect for getting up closer to people and isolating a subject for things like portraits or street photography or things of that nature. I always give this advice. However, in the past, I have kind of gone against that advice for my personal work. I used to shoot on the Fuji system and I would always use the Fuji 35 millimeter F2 lens, which is about a 52 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length. And I really liked that focal length because it allowed for me to get a little bit tighter, to isolate my subject a little bit more and get a little bit more of a blurry background. But because now I'm shooting on a Sony full frame camera, I'm able to use a little bit of a wider focal length and still get that same subject isolation and that same bokeh, so to speak. We're able to blur out the background just about as much as I was with that other lens, but also have a little bit of a wider angle of view. The thing that really defines a 35 millimeter F1.4 lens is its unique ability to give you a little bit of a wider angle of view, but still isolate your subject in the foreground. Because of its F1.4 aperture, you're able to take a picture of your subject and give some context in terms of what the scene is, like what's going on in the background, what's going on in the foreground, and what does the environment look like. But also at the same time, because of that fast aperture, you're able to completely blur out that background and make sure that your subject is isolated and stands out as the subject of the photo. In terms of sharpness, this lens is razor sharp at every aperture, including f1.4. I almost exclusively shoot this thing at f1.4 because, quite frankly, that's what I spent the money for and that's what it's made for. I know that no matter what the aperture is, I'll always have a tack sharp image. So when I'm shooting portraits at f1.4, as long as I nail autofocus on the eye or on the face of my subject, I know it's gonna be tack sharp. And then when you begin to stop it down to like f5.6 or f8 or f11 for something like a landscape or a cityscape, I always know that this lens is going to be just about as sharp as possible. There's not a ton of lenses out there that can be sharper than this one. And you can probably watch other reviews where they're taking pictures of charts and things of that nature to verify that conclusion. But I 100% can verify from my experience that that's the case. I do only shoot on the a7 III, which is a 24 megapixel sensor, whereas there are other cameras like the a7R 3 and the R4 that just came out that's like a 61 megapixel sensor, which is insane. But I, obviously I don't have firsthand experience, but I would bet a lot of money that this thing would be still tack sharp on the a7R 4s 61 megapixel sensor, even at f1.4, because it's just that good. But the important thing when you're talking about sharpness at f1.4 is autofocus, which segues us into our next point. So this lens was originally designed for DSLR cameras like Canon or Nikon, or I think they made it for like the Sony DSLR system as well. But what Sigma did was they actually built in an adapter into the lens itself that allows for it to work natively with all of Sony's autofocus functions. So when I'm shooting with this lens, I'm always shooting with either the face or the eye detection on when I'm shooting portraits and just things of other people. 
This lens is so good at autofocus. It's honestly just about as good as any of the other native Sony lenses. I haven't had any autofocus issues with it whatsoever. It's super quick, super snappy, super accurate. And to be completely honest, I don't think I've missed focus on like any of my shots so far. I don't shoot anything crazy like sports or action or anything like that. So I don't know if I'd recommend this lens for that just because I don't have any firsthand experience with it. But for portraits, landscapes, and some street photography that I do as well, it has nailed focus for everything. In fact, I also shot a video of my sister earlier this week doing one of her dances where I used complete autofocus on it. I used the face tracking autofocus in video on this lens on a gimbal and it worked perfectly. I'll actually roll the clip right now just so you can see how it held the autofocus throughout. say the autofocus on this thing is fantastic and not only is it a high performer but it's also built like a tank this thing is solid metal throughout I feel like I could probably beat somebody over the head with this thing and it would still work completely fine it is also one of the only Sony lenses that has a true manual focus ring so it has a manual focus switch here where you can switch the autofocus on or off and instead of being a fly-by wire mechanism where you're kind of electronically controlling the focus you spin the autofocus ring or not the autofocus focus ring the manual focus ring and you directly control the optical elements inside of the lens to control the focus so if you're a person that likes using manual focus for your photos your videos or whatever this in my opinion is a much better solution than a lot of Sony's native lenses overall the build quality on this thing is fantastic and it's just as good if not better than any of Sony's native glass a side effect of this thing being built like a tank however is that it's big and it's heavy this isn't a problem in most cases where I'm just walking around with it, taking portraits, and it doesn't really matter how big my lens is. However, when I'm flying it on my gimbal, like I was in that video of my sister earlier, oftentimes I notice that the gimbal is actually struggling with it because it's so heavy. I do have a gimbal that's made for lighter and smaller cameras, so I probably need to upgrade that at some point, but it definitely is something that I've noticed compared to other cameras that I've used in the past with smaller lenses. It is pretty big and pretty heavy, and if you're a person that does a lot of street photography or things where you want to be inconspicuous, this might not be the lens for you just because people are going to notice this lens when you're walking around in public. It looks very professional. It's very big. but. If you're a person that likes something that's beefy, that feels like it's well built, like I really do, I really appreciate the solid build quality of lenses, you'll definitely appreciate this and you'll appreciate the fact that it's a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier. We also gotta talk about this thing's value for the money. Yes, it is an expensive lens. However, right now is good news for anybody that's in the market for it. Sigma recently just announced their 35 millimeter F1.2 lens, which is gonna be an insane lens when that comes out. As a result of that, Sigma's actually discounted the price on this by $200. So you can now get this lens for $699 brand new, which is insane. If you look at any of the competition's lenses, they're so much more expensive. For example, Sony's native 35 millimeter F1.4 lens, I believe is $1,600, whereas Canon's F1.4 lens is $1,700, and I think same with Nikon's. I just looked up all those prices earlier. I don't just know those off the top of my head. I'm not crazy like that. Sony did just recently announce their 35 millimeter F1.8 lens, which is much smaller, much more compact, and it is actually comparably priced to this. However, when we're talking about a 35 millimeter lens, I genuinely think it's important for you to have as fast of a lens as possible. And I think that this F1.4 aperture versus an F1.8 is gonna make a big difference in terms of the background blur and the subject separation that you're capable of getting. I don't have any firsthand experience with that F1.8 lens, and I think there's already a bunch of videos out there comparing F1.4 versus F1.8 at a 35 millimeter focal length, but personally, I prefer the F1.4 aperture, and I'm not really even considering that smaller F1.8 lens. And as a matter of fact, this I still think at its discounted price is still considerably cheaper than Sony's F1.8 lens. So to wrap things up, if you're a person that's in the market for a 35 millimeter wide angle prime that has a super fast aperture, I genuinely think that this is the lens for you. There's a ton of alternatives out there, but the majority of them are so much more expensive. And quite frankly, the build quality and the image quality is not gonna be much better 
than this lens. This lens is a rock star. It's a killer lens, and I am so happy with it. I've been loving all the pictures that I've been getting with it. And if I haven't shown you enough pictures already, here's a couple more. But 100% recommend this lens, and if you're in the market for something like this, this is gonna be the move for you. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps out the channel a ton. I'm getting super close to 1,000 subscribers, so I'm super amped for that. I think we're like 30 subscribers away, so if you're not subscribed already and you wanna see more photography content every single week from me, definitely hit that subscribe button, help me get to 1,000, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.